This is Brandon, I'm Sarah, and of course, our beloved Ico. Frustrated by the ever-increasing cost of living, we sold everything, went out on a limb, and left our traditional life on land behind. We built a new kind of dream together, and now get to call this slice of paradise home. We're learning how to navigate this unique life off the grid and on the water. So grab a drink and join us for the ever-evolving adventure that is keeping afloat. After months of deconstructing, refloating, enlarging, and refinishing nearly every surface in and on this old boathouse, us floating cabin flippers are finally getting to the fun part, <laughs> finishing out the interior. Up in the queue this week was our ceiling installation. But first, travel back in time with me, if you will, to exactly one year ago today. Our friend Jericho is helping us frame out the structure, which we now call home, and I heard a funny new term for the very first time. NTNG, tongue and groove for you layman. Like myself? Yeah. Okay. What's tongue and groove? <laughs> cool, copy. What's tongue that? Tongue and groove, yeah, hell yeah. You know, the What's one. That? <laughs> I only wish I was kidding, but nope, really. One year ago today was the first time I ever even heard of Tongue and Groove. And I'd like to tell you that this episode is the story of how far we've come in a year from not even knowing what TNG is to installing it ourselves with professional level perfection. But that would be a bit of an oversimplification. That was hard. Yeah. Each one keeps getting progressively worse. I just don't get it. The money we spent extra doing this. I don't know if it looks better. Well, let's not jump the gun. The thing is, even when you try to learn by watching others, true learning comes more often than not from getting hands-on and making your own mistakes. And although we had some mistakes still yet to be made, one headache we were lucky enough to have already learned from in the past was staining tongue and groove after installation. With our limited space on this floating setup, it would be a bit of an awkward and time-consuming process to stain all of the boards in small batches, waiting for each batch to dry before being able to stack it and use that space for the next batch. But we knew from experience that a little awkwardness and a little extra time was still a million times worth it to not have to put ourselves through the overhead staining process again. Oh my gosh, I don't there? want to stain no more. Are you there? I'm over. Especially since we wound up having to install the walls before the ceiling. So eventually, with our walls spared the stain splatters and our shoulders spared the aching pain, we had a good portion of the boards ready for installation. It was dinner time already, but Brandon was so excited that he wanted to get the first few boards up just to see what the process would be like. Oh God, <laughs> that's not a good start. You did it. Yes. <laughs> it's just not clicking in the old coconut, huh? Sometimes it be like that. <laughs> All right, third time's the charm. All right. It's gonna look so good. One thing I just love about this golden oak stain is it retains all of the uh, rings. It even highlights them and I just love that. You know, a dark stain can look really classy sometimes, but you lose the detailing of all those rings that I think is just part of what makes working with wood so beautiful. How much do you have at work? You see? Yeah. The concept of installing tongue and groove is super simple. As the name would suggest, each board has a side with a protruding tongue and a side with a recessed groove. The boards fit like puzzle pieces together and you nail each one in at the groove so no nails are visible in the end. As long as you know how to measure and make cuts, there's really nothing to it. Or at least, that would be the case in a perfect world. <laughs> but it wouldn't be until the following day that we figured out that it ain't a perfect world. What's your first impression of it? I like it. I, I think it's a good ceiling. It takes a little while to put in, but this ain't going to be nothing to it. It's just going to take a little time to do it. I think once we get the hang of it, it'll start rolling real quick, just like the floor does. Yeah, this room's perfectly, it's a perfect square. So once we get one measurement, we can cut every board and bring them in, put them up, bring it in, put it up. I mean, it's just bam, bam, bam. That should take an hour, 30 minutes to finish that. This is gonna take a little bit of thinking here because this piece comes to this edge, this way, and right in this area, it's running that way. Run two directions right here. 
Why? Well, my girlfriend, uh, fiance, not my girlfriend, she didn't do that. It was my fiance. Oh. When she measured the house for Lowell to buy the stuff, she measured that wall and that wall. But when she was measuring, she didn't think about measuring from that wall to this wall, being that this was longer. Now, if she would have put that in there, we would have 12 foot boards and it'd be one run. But because we got 10 foot boards, if we put a seam in that 10 foot board, then we need to have, it needs to have seams all in everything. You don't want them in one spot. So the only fix that me and Lowell and Mama come up with was from here to there, both of these walls, there's gonna be, it's gonna run this direction. Baby, baby. What? Excuse you. This spot will run this direction. <laughs> Anyways. And then it'll run out that way. And it'll look like we meant it to be like that. And it'll look good. So that's why that's happening. Sex to be your fiance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I want to see the picture I drew you. Okay, I didn't specify the yellow line length. From but this spot I mean, to you this know, spot is longer than either one of those. Yes, he should have seen that, but he didn't because he looked at that and he went with well, it. This yeah. was specified. Anyways, Mama seems to think there will have to be a piece of trim board right there where they meet. I seem to think that I can make it hit close enough. We will find out. Despite your girlfriend, I mean, despite your fiance's. Well, my girlfriend didn't do it. It was my fiance. Okay. Your well, girlfriend's, good. yeah, she's in the clear. But she ain't here right now, so. What, it, what is she like? She can read a tape measure. She sounds hideous. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that bear? Is that your dad? <laughs> well, it is a windy one today. I'm very glad we're gonna be working inside. All right, so one thing that we've got to do before we move forward with the room that we started on here is uh, get the insulation in the top of this. So while we still have um, the gap. That thing drives me absolutely insane. It's like it never quits because we accidentally poked a hole in the cord. So it's always losing pressure. We desperately need to get a new cord because it drives me crazy. As I was saying, let's do it. We're both having a tie up our boats in a little bit of a different spot. They're just getting beat against the dock here. But the good thing about a dinghy is that it's literally surrounded by fenders. <laughs> so we're having, oh my gosh, having a little bit of a hard time like some of these boards it's a perfect fit and then all of a sudden at the very end it's like bent. And cue the imperfect world. When a board of wood is ever so slightly bent you can still pry it into place to a certain degree. So that's what we started doing which right off the bat slowed us down but our ideal timeline was the least of our worries. The real problem is that if the wood is so warped that you can't get it perfectly straight in line Every other piece after that will be slightly off too, and progressively more so as you go along. Ideally, you just throw the bent board out so as not to be thrown off track, but what happens when about every third board seems to be bent? We were getting worried we wouldn't even have enough wood after spending all this money to finish the ceiling if we kept throwing them at it this rate. I just don't get it. We're having to pry this in. These little bitty gaps are adding up. And if we don't work that back in straight. Where do you think I go? We're just not very good at ceilings, are we, Coco? This is stupid. This just looks so easy. Yeah, I can't can't lie here. We're struggle busing. Morale is low. <laughs> um, we're just really frustrated. It seems like 
each one keeps getting progressively worse because of the one before it being a little out of whack, you know, it's like a compounding thing. So we're also um, having a hard time balancing. <laughs> Eventually, we decided that there was just no way to keep moving forward trying to pry the substantially bent boards in. If we had to buy more wood, then so be it. Well, all things considered, it still looks pretty good. That looks really good. Yeah. Just the bedroom from hell. Wise man once said, if you're going through hell, just keep going. <laughs> Don't look back. You might get out for the devil only straight boards for the next room and sure enough everything went smoothly and we finished it in a fraction of the time the last bedroom had taken and as for our morale well luckily we had our resident morale booster to thank for fixing that what are you doing in there miss bear just your little playground huh i do sincerely thank you for cheering us up earlier you're so good at that you look beautiful in your new collar no doubt how are you feeling now Better now I got the damn trick. Before that, I was ready to say, screw it, we're gonna leave the ceilings open. <laughs> Give it that rustic look. Yeah. Do you care to explain real quick for anybody wondering why we're putting insulation up? If we spray it, I could see people that being confused about that. The ceiling. Yes. It's not a true insulation. It's only got what, like R6 value? It's yeah, more it's about, R6. It was more about humidity ceiling. and water. Though. We don't want this place to sweat. On that notion, we still put an insulation in. Which we already had, it's not like we had to go buy this. And I love putting insulation overhead. <laughs> it's like my most favorite thing to do. The only thing more fun than that is standing overhead. It's such a pity we won't have to do that. Yeah. I think that if going down boards or straight, this would be the simplest, easiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Finally figured out the boards, some of them are warped. You're better off just throwing those down in the trash and getting a new one and then trying to dog all that stuff in because you are fighting. I do really like our little switch up in the direction of the boards over there, even though that wasn't the plan. <laughs> I think it looks kind of cool. Yeah. But it's looking good. It was not a fun day, but it's uh, the turnout is quite nice. So yeah, tomorrow we just have basically the kitchen here and the bathroom. <sighs> Hopefully we'll take today's lessons and be a bit more efficient by tomorrow. Woo! Pretty tall seas for a lake, huh, Bear? Gosh, the wind has only gotten worse today. It's just crazy how choppy it is. Hopefully we'll have um, better luck in that arena tomorrow as well. Oof. Yay! Bear's excited to finish the ceiling. So we wound up um, not really being able to work yesterday, which in hindsight, it was probably good to have, you know, a little bit of a break. We just weren't in a great headspace yesterday and that just happens, you know? Um, it's pretty frustrating just dealing with all those bent boards. It's like, does nobody make good products anymore, you know? Anyways, it's uh, very nice and calm today. It should be a very pleasant day, much better than the other day. We're excited to knock this out. I feel much more optimistic about it. I think it's gonna be a lot smoother now that we have a little bit of know-how. That's what learning's all about. Let's do it.
pre-approving these boards, figuring out whether they're straight or not. It's just so clear to see some of them, how bent they are. They're flush, it's perfect, it's perfect. And then all of a sudden it bows out in the middle and then comes back in the end and it's perfect. Or like this one, if it's gonna be flush here, then it pops out on the other end. And then when you try and, you know, warp it and nail it back in, it's gonna pop out again. We ain't messing with those no more, are we, baby? No. Another skill we just added to our repertoire. Yeah. We got spray insulation, we got TNG. Well, master bullshit. <laughs> You've had that. I like what's on in group. This house feels really tall. I was surprised. I thought it would make it feel short, but it doesn't. It feels tall. It does. This thing's gonna be nice. Maybe we'll sell our house and move it. <laughs> Truth be told, I think we might still just be a bit too in love with our house to be able to sell it and move out. But moving into this house is certainly something we've seriously considered only because of how amazing we know it's going to turn out. Whoever buys this is going to be one lucky duck, in our completely biased opinion. <laughs> now with the ceiling behind us, or rather above us, next week you're going to get to see the floors go in, walls get caulked and painted, and much more. When I say things are coming together quick, I mean quick. So be sure to shoot us an email if you're interested in purchasing this build. And for those of you who are just enjoying coming alongside us for the journey, be sure to give this video a like and leave us a comment. We'll see you next Friday.